Here in the United States, it is our national pastime. And though this country will always be linked to baseball, more recently another red, white, and blue nation has staked its claim as the sport's top breeding ground. And those from the Dominican Republic make up the largest foreign-born population in Major League Baseball. I visited the Caribbean island in search of the recipe for a big league star. Melissa, tell us the process that's involved with young baseball players here in the Dominican. Well, baseball here starts at a, at a really early age. Watching the uh, big leaguers on TV uh, in the summer, I think, is, is kind of really the first piece of it. And so at, a, at, an, at an early age, it starts. And, and once you get to this level of, of a kid being around 13, uh, 13 years old in, in that teenage uh, kind of range, I think now the focus becomes, hey, how can, I, how can I get to the professional side of baseball? And the Dominican Prospect League, founded in 2010, is helping them do just that. What we've done with the, the Dominican Prospect League is, is try to insert some, some type of standard, whether it's a team having an opportunity to evaluate a player in, in game uh, format, or if it's from the trainer side to, to show them that, hey, look, it's important for your players to be uh, game tested and, and prepared mentally for the grind. Uh, of, of profane, uh, playing professional baseball and, and for that trek, not only from professional baseball, but all the way up to the big leagues. The DPL was created to organize what was becoming a more and more factioned Dominican baseball scene. Scouts can now travel to one location and see all the top talent on the island, a sensible convenience that wasn't always available. What would happen before, I'm a scout for a team. I see this pitcher. I would go tell this trainer, hey, let's hide this pitcher. And hide him out so no other scout sees him. Hmm. And you know what? I'll take care of you, the trainer. I'll take care of you for doing this at the time the signing happens. Oh, okay. And, and if I'm, let's say, uh, you know, the team, then I benefit from that because I get the player. And and you're the trainer and you benefit from that because now you, you have the assurance that your players are gonna get signed. They're playing baseball on a Thursday morning. Yeah. So they're not in school. Nope. That. Now, that's something that I guess should be corrected. Some of these kids, uh, some of these younger kids, they, they probably have school in the afternoon, which allows them to come out here on the baseball field. Whereas there are some kids that have school in the morning that might allow them to come out here in the afternoon as is typical in the United States. There are a lot of kids that are here that are in school, but just part-time. Uh, for those that aren't here, um, I think the, the justification is that this is their best way out of their reality that you see across the street. This is the kid's best chance of, of producing uh, as a, a, as a student in the United States would produce if they were to go through the high school process or the college process. Focusing on baseball might provide the greatest possible reward for Dominican kids, but is it really the best path for them? To get another point of view, I visited my friend and former teammate Juan Marichal at his Dominican home, where we talked about his history with free agents from his country. You know, I, I worked 14 years for the Oakland A's as a scout director of Latin America. And 95% of the kids that we sign in this country don't go to school. Things may have improved since then, but as we explored his personal memorabilia, Marichal told me his home country still hasn't done enough. They should have a law to push education to the young kids because uh, day by day is more kids that don't want to go to school. And I think that's very, very sad, very bad. A lot of kids uh, think like I used to think when I was a kid, that I, I, I used to tell my mother, no, I'm going to be a baseball player. She used to tell me, yeah, but how are you going to support your family when you grew up, when you get married, you create a family? I say, 
don't worry, Mom, I'm going to be a baseball player. That's what, the only answer I got for her. But it, it, it is not, even if you make it, 97% didn't. You know, I learned, I learned that education is like a bird with two wings, right? Education, you fly all your life. The Dominican New York Connection. That's next on the game 365. Thousands of miles away from the streets of Santo Domingo, one can find pieces of the Dominican Republic in the Washington Heights neighborhood of Northern Manhattan. As would be expected, the Caribbean island's favorite sport is a central focus of the community. It is also the theme of a restaurant where the country's love for baseball is printed on the menu. Pedro Alvarez Sr., whose son of the same name plays for the Pittsburgh Pirates, is a regular at the eatery. Pedro Alvarez Jr. grew up in Washington Heights and, according to his father, had an easier road to the majors in this country than he would have in the Dominican. El jugador que viene de la República Dominicana o del Caribe es una clase de jugador que verdaderamente merece un gran mérito por grandes esfuerzos que hacen, que no tiene la oportunidad que tiene el jugador de Estados Unidos. Ya de que en los Estados Unidos a estos muchachos se les facilita desde la high school hasta el colegio, la cual en la República Dominicana ellos no tienen la oportunidad de estudiar en un colegio ni de que se les hagan las ofertas de útiles que ellos necesitan para desarrollar este deporte tan exigente. Que verdaderamente hay que ser ambicioso para un jugador dominicano llegar al profesionalismo. ¿Por qué? Porque son tantos obstáculos que se le presentan que hay que ser demasiado valiente para seguir. Yo no sé si te has dado cuenta a veces cómo estos muchachos juegan en uno terreno que cualquier otra persona jamás podría coger una bola. Pero no te olvides que el jugador dominicano desde que nace, nace con un bate y un guante debajo de los brazos. Es como el pan de cada ser humano. Ese es el pan de un dominicano. Un guante y un bate desde que nacen. And while baseball is often cited as a reason for a player not to go to school in the Dominican Republic, in Washington Heights, in some cases, it is the opposite. Members of the New York Bulldogs, a group of travel teams based in the northern Manhattan neighborhood, use the game to pass on the importance of education. We have uh, several teams, 13, 14 year old, 15, 16 year old, 17, 18 year old. Some of the kids really rely on baseball, but sometimes we have to, uh, we have to tell them like, you know, baseball is not, is not the only thing in life, you know. You should concentrate on school, because you could just get injured and baseball career is over. That message certainly has gotten through to those associated with the New York Bulldogs, allowing them to make the best choices when faced with tough decisions. I went to college, I developed myself into a better ball player, so I, I felt like I was ready already to sign. Everybody was seeing it in me, and I was seeing people that was actually signing, I was, and I felt like I was better than them, or I can do that same job. So. The Dominican Republic provides an easier, you know, access to that with the simple fact that you can sign as a free agent. You can't really do that here. So I went out there. I was living like in this rough, rough, rough neighborhood. I got offered something by a team, but I felt like it wasn't enough. You know, like what's $20,000 nowadays? So I felt like, you know, at least, I, you know, I speak fluently English and Spanish. I'm, I was born here. So I have other options, you know, I can maybe go back to school, get a degree or something and make more than that, as opposed to me signing for maybe $20,000 and getting released next year, now what? Exploitation or opportunity? That's next on The Game 365.
Major League Baseball can be associated with many things, but it is certainly synonymous with money. An average big league salary is over $3 million, the third most of any professional sports league. It's an economically depressed area, the Dominican Republic. Is this a way out for the player or for the family or both? I don't know if, if I would uh, qualify it as, as a way out. Um, I think for the most part, uh, you see when, when players get to the professional level and even to the big leagues, they look for ways to stay in. Uh, and I think that's a, it's a key distinction because uh, you know the Dominican uh, camaraderie is it's all about, hey, how, how can I help others? Um, and, and so I think it's, it's a way for kids uh, to, to, to achieve something that helps them achieve something for the rest of their families and their, and their communities. But the players and their families are not the only ones who cash in. Most all of the prospects on the island are represented by an adult, who in turn, for providing a means for a talented kid to get signed, will receive a portion of the player's signing bonus. Many refer to them as buscones, which translated can mean, among other definitions, swindlers, petty thieves, or pilferers. The term buscone is, is fairly derogatory and, and isn't representative of the work that goes on by the majority of the, the trainers or high school baseball coaches that, that are out here. The people that are responsible for developing players are really trainers. It, it's better to think of them as high school coaches, uh, baseball coaches, and instead of uh, people who are running around uh, toting players and kind of taking them from one place to another as if they were used uh, car salesmen. La, la diferencia es que un entrenador es lo que nosotros hacemos. Nosotros ahora mismo somos dos partes, somos entrenadores e inversionistas. Nosotros la vez que lo entrenamos, el mismo caso mío, yo vengo ahora mismo, yo tengo 11 trabajadores para mí, y yo vengo a entrenar a mi pelotero, y a la vez tengo que darle ropa, zapatos, médicos, comida, escuela, le pagamos la escuela también. Y la diferencia del bucón, que el bucón lo que hace va y lo busca y se lo lleva, no importa que el pelotero eh, esté mal, no coma, lo que le importa es su dinero, nosotros no. Pero cuando tú buscas un pelotero de 13 años porque tú eres un entrenador, los 13 años no firman a nadie. Entonces nosotros somos inversionistas. Ya ahora ya la palabra, ya entrenador no vemos, que vemos inversionista y entrenador a la vez. Ya yo creo que los buscadores están desapareciendo porque que no, el que no prepara peloteros no nos firma ahora mismo. Ya los padres son responsables, igual que nosotros. No le va a dar un, un propeto a un, a un buscón. Se lo da un entrenador como nosotros, que le garantizamos su comida, su alimentación, su colegio determinante, lo llevamos por un buen camino. We have to no, no, no only be a, a trainer. We have to be a father. We have to be a psychologist. We have to be many things. There, there's not only throw rollings or, or hit a bat or throw a ball. There are many things involved in, in, in how to prepare a kid to be, uh, uh, how to be interest for, for a major league organization to sign. But despite the picture painted by some trainers, it has been alleged that some of these representatives take more than their fair share of the signing bonus, leaving the player who possesses the actual talent with less money than he deserves. Those who have been to the Dominican Republic have seen how some of this happens firsthand. I was 17 years old when I, when I first came here. Uh, Bucones. They just do everything for money. They don't do it for the future of their kids. They just want to get money from their kids when they sign. And that's all they do. Sometimes he ends up telling you, oh, you signed for, they're offering you $60,000 when, when they're really offering you $100,000. He's already taking $40,000, and then he cuts you off once you sign the 60. You know, so, I mean, it's good and it's bad because at the end of the day, they get the job done. You know, they get you signed, but, you mess with your money. I don't think that we take advantage to the kids. We make a business, a human business. We invest, we put our work, our knowledge uh, to prepare those kids. And after they sign, they, uh, we bring back our invest and some earns. You know what I mean? Uh, here, the, the, the way that we work, we, we got 30% of the, of the contract. 
For example, if a kid signed for 100,000 bucks, for example, we get 30,000 and the other 70,000 go to the family and the kids. If a player, one of these players signed today after being with you for three years for a $150,000 bonus, what would the trainer take off the bonus? No siempre en Dominicana se gana. En el, en el 60% de los casos uno, uno pierde, pero uno trata de hacer fino en el cauteo para no poder sacar provecho. Yo el año pasado tuve dos casos con dos propuestos que eran proyectados para coger millones. Jerónimo François firmó por 250 mil dólares y Luis Marte firmó por 215 mil dólares. Pero creo que estuvieron conmigo de los 13 años. Entonces ahí no hubo una ganancia suficiente. Ahí nosotros perdimos. It sounds to me like the pie has a lot of pieces. Hay muchos hay mucho pedazos, pero que. Cuando uno viene, como el caso de ellos, vienen de fuera a hacer una entrevista, han pintado al béisbol dominicano como que es un tesoro, como que es una gallina con huevo de oro. Cuando tú estás de este lado, que invertimos, sabemos que el negocio está complicado. La pelota, esto, este año que pasó, no dejó ganancia. The Dominican Dandies Take. That's next on The Game 365. Today, Major League Baseball is filled with stars from the Dominican Republic. But according to Juan Marichal, the path to the big leagues wasn't as apparent when he broke in in 1960. How tough was it for you to adjust when you were just a kid and went to the United States? Very hard, very hard. When Buddy Kerr took us to Michigan City, Indiana in a Greyhound bus. He was your manager? Yes. You have to ride on the last seat of the bus, and you have to go through the kitchen to get food. And during the, the regular season traveling, we have to stay on the bus. And some teammate bring us some food from the restaurant. We can't we can get off the bus. So it was very hard. How do you, at that moment, say, okay, I'm really here to get into the major league, so I have to deal with this? You know, I, I used to think so much about what I left behind. My mother, my two brothers, and my sister. I promised her that I was going to be a baseball player. But sometime, in my mind, I say, did, did that worth it? What I, what I have to go through here, or I should go back. And I always come out with a conclusion, saying that from here, if I make it, I can help more than if I'm there. So I think that I, I took the right decision, but it was hard because it was seen easy. And because of Juan's continuing connection with both his home country and the game that made him famous, I was interested to hear what he had to say about the controversy surrounding the treatment of young prospects in the Dominican Republic. The Busconi, they do a good job here in this country. They do. Who, do they, yes. who, who would you start with them? They go to different cities, different places, and get the kids and bring them to the, to the academy or to, to a school, whatever. They have some Busconi, they develop the, the kids. And when they're ready to sign, they introduce it to the scouts to sign them. When you get a kid, you go to any, any place in the Dominican Republic, you bring a kid to the capital, you put him to live in a, in a, in a uh, apartment or a house, you feed him, you buy clothes, you buy medicine, you buy shoes, everything. If that kid take two years to, to, to sign, that costs, that costs some money. Yeah. yeah. Now, the Busconi sign an agreement with the, with the parents of the kid because he's a minor, he cannot sign anything. 
So he signed an agreement with the parents. Whenever he signed, I ch I'm going to get either 25% of his bono or 30%. I don't think, I don't, I think that's fair. The Game 365 has been brought to you in part by Mizuno, the world's number one baseball company, because the best players demand the best equipment. Learn more at MizunoUSA.com.